Then I went to class and he was not there. I was like, yes! Yes! TheSmartLocal.com Hello. Have you ever been bullied before? Wow, such a heavy question. Yes, I have. I got bullied a couple of times, but the biggest one that I remember is when I was in primary 3, I was being bullied by this dude. It's not some random dude, it's my best friend's older brother who was in primary 5. The bullying was like calling me names, and during recess, he would steal my pocket money. During that time, I was a little bit on the chubbier side, so I did have to go for a tough club during recess and I have to run, so I didn't use the money, but still, it's not nice having your money stolen, especially from your best friend's brother. He was the only one who was tormenting me during that time and it came to a point where I was so miserable right, that I had to skip school. Um, I lasted for a month. Obviously, the teachers would call like every single day, you know, right? I don't know why, but I had this skill where my voice was lower than normal. And I pretended to be my father. So whenever the teacher would call like, hello, blah, 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 then I'll be like, hello. <laughs> the bullying didn't stop until he graduated. So I, I knew that it was a very toxic environment and I took myself out of that equation and that best friend also not my best friend anymore because I mean they live in the same house. How to not be bullied? When I was 14 years old, I actually had my first experience of cyberbullying. At the point of time, there was this thing called Ask FM. So when I went into secondary school, I started becoming a lot more vocal. And I started having this way of speaking, which some people call it an accent, some people call me pretentious. But to me, it's just enunciating my words and having proper pronunciation. Because of that, people would come and say, oh, she's a fake she's being so pretentious, why do you have such an accent all the time, you think you, what, like some white girl is it? And I'm just here thinking, what? What's so weird with the way I spoke English, like I never understood. But a lot of it came with, either they will touch with the way that I speak English, or they will call me straight up ugly. So let me just read through some of the hate that I've gotten, okay? You big is it? Stewardess, right? You Working adult, wanna can I whack on the street, is it? I'm like, huh? And I think a lot of it goes into people talking about my job as well. They're like, who hire you, Sia? Like, your face all can become air stewardess, is it? Yeah, I still do get them. It's very common nowadays and it used to hurt me a lot. Like, a lot. It brought me down to a very dark path. There were days that I would just sit down and cry. But nowadays, I just look at it, I laugh and I'm like, you know what? I'm very proud of who I am. I've gotten here because of all the struggles I've been through. My struggles may not be the same as yours. It may seem really tiny compared to what you have struggled and that's okay lah. My plate is my own plate, your plate your own plate lah. We don't share plate, okay? So in secondary school, you don't really get to choose where you're seated. So I was the only girl in the entire class who was stuck next to a guy. This guy happened to be a bully. He happened to be a really, really obnoxious loud. You know the kind of guy that has to prove that he's popular and he's funny but actually he, he's not funny, he's not popular. He always shouts in class, Hey Amanda, your parents divorced, is it because your father don't want you? All this obnoxious behaviour from this guy, right, really really made me hate school. I really dreaded going to school and having to sit next to him. After many months of hating school and hating to have to sit next to him, right, he was actually caught by a teacher for having unsavoury content in his laptop. And it's a school laptop. By unsavoury content, I mean porn. And then I still remember my friends was like, Oh my god, the guy is very got suspended and he got like, transferred to another class, another school, is it? Then I was like, really? Then I went to class and he was not there. I was like, yes! Yes! I thank all the gods in the world. So I wonder if he watches TSL. If you do, not too late to say sorry. <laughs> but to be honest, I don't really care. La. So this incident actually happened a couple of years ago when I was working in the States. Um, I was an intern at this startup. So about four months in, right, one of the managers left the company um, and they hired someone to replace his position. And initially, I think she seemed quite okay. I think one thing that a lot of people who come from bigger companies are not used to in startups is that generally in startups, there aren't really like hierarchy levels there. The employees are kind of treated all the same in terms of whether you're like an intern, you're a manager, they value all of your inputs quite a lot. One of the things that they got this new manager to do uh, for her onboarding was to check in with me on how some of the tasks were being done. So as I was running through some of the tasks before, I started to realise that she wasn't very open, I guess, 
uh, in talking to me. Every time I try to explain something to her, she will always seem to kind of take it in, but also like not very happy. And I really wasn't quite sure why. Cause to me, it's like I'm just doing my job, right? This kind of attitude got worse and worse. So it actually got to a point where she wouldn't look at me in the eye when I'm talking to her. She will send me very pego messages on Slack in front of the rest of the team, when let's say we were having team lunches together, she would be very, very nice to me. So she'll say like, oh, like, look, like this is our Singaporean intern and she's so great. Like, uh, she's so capable and blah, 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 blah. But then when it was just the two of us together, she would like roll her eyes at me. She would just be very, very unhappy with me. And I don't know why. Things kind of got worse and worse over time. And I remember there was one day I just sat down at my office table, right? And I thought like, wow, I flew all the way from Singapore to New York. And then this is what I have to deal with. I got a little bit upset. Uh, I went to the call room at the back to kind of take a breather and then I just broke down. And at that point in time, I didn't really understand why I was crying so much or like why it impacted me so much. And I texted uh, my supervisor, I said like, we really need to talk because I'm very upset and I cannot understand my feelings. When I was in primary school, because I was quite a chubby kid, so I get like fat shamed a lot. When I went to secondary school, I was still a bit like awkward and very insecure about my size. So I guess like that kind of showed like weaknesses and I became like a target for bullying in sec one. And it got quite bad to the point that like the whole class was bullying me. They would throw like the permanent marker across the room and then the pen broke, right? And then the ink was splattered on my uniform and they are not sorry about it. And like they even hit a dead lizard on my table also and when I freaked out like the whole class was just laughing lah. There was really like nobody there to help me and like I only can depend on myself. There was one point where I was actually friends with a group of people and then after a while you know when there is communication breakdown like just two of these particular friends of mine decided to come together to create a fake Twitter account. At that point in time I still had Twitter. Okay so the Twitter account was a particular name and there was a fake Twitter account that was going around with the same name, just that two of the alphabets were swapped. So people really didn't know which one was the real account because even on my own account, I don't really post a lot of things because I'm not really a Twitter person. So I saw the account and it was really like trash talking about myself and about others, which I don't do because why would I want to trash talk about myself on my own Twitter account? I was like, hmm, who could be behind this? Right? And then I look at the contents of it and they were all really mean things that were being said about others. So basically what this person or this group of people or these two people were doing were tweeting mean stuff, pretending to be me so that others would hate on me. Then I think that was when I realised, wow, people do go to such extremes just because of conflict of interest or disagreement. That's when I realised, okay, you know what? I am done with this. Like people are trying to tarnish my name without reason and creating a fake account to, to a point where by trying to really tarnish my name lah, and I felt it was lame. So I deleted my entire Twitter account. You know, it's funny because how a simple act of just creating a fake account was able to make me so scared to use social media. And it does affect my mental health a little bit because at that point in time, I was still very young. I was still trying to build myself up. I was so traumatized by it that I never downloaded Twitter or used Twitter ever again in my life until now. And it's been what? Like 10 years? <laughs> like, it was two years ago. It's not a very huge clique. It's like six of us in total. I mean, five of us. So like four of them decided to like one day fall with me. At first, it was just a normal girl's problem. But then it got very serious. One day, they just told me that they want to like talk things out with me and they decided to tell me to like sit in a circle. Okay, it's not really a circle, it's like a square table. So I was sat in the middle and one of them suggested that they should say what they don't like about me. Afterwards, I went on a two months internship with them. It's quite abandoned, so there was only like a few coffee shops around. So every day I have to guess like which coffee shop they're eating at because they don't like to be in the same environment as me. So in the end, I chose to eat at the bus stop. And then, like, oh, I was seated on the ground. They were just like, tap on my finger. It was quite sad because I treated them as my closest friend at the point of time. And, and then they post nasty things about me on social media, so they say like, she's such a b She only like, talks shit about people. I hope she like, 
die. They always say like they hope that I'm not around. Yeah, that's their favorite sentence. What kind of lessons do you learn from this whole experience? Because it's been two years plus. I just feel that it's just time heals lah. Mm -hmm. I mean, now I'm still upset over it, but I wouldn't say I'm as sad as two years ago. Initially, I didn't think that this was bullying. But one thing I realised is that bullying always comes in a place where there is a power difference. When someone who is in a higher position uh, knows that they have more authority over you, and I guess they kind of use that fact to treat you in a way where it makes you feel like less comfortable. They want to use that to kind of get power or get respect in that sense. As much as it really affected my mental health a lot, and this has started from the age of 14, 13 years old, so it's about 9 to 10 years. I tried my best to kind of just ignore it. So sometimes you have to stand strong and face it, you know, just look at it. I don't know why anybody would consciously want to send hate. I cannot fathom that idea, but things happen. People do things to hurt people, but just know that that doesn't determine your worth in any way. I learned that it is very easy to bully someone. It is so easy for you to start the bullying and it is easy for the bully to stop. But for the victim of the bullying, whatever that they experience may be carried on all the way till the rest of their life and you will never know. Sometimes I just feel that like you may not need to have someone to really like understand whatever you are going through exactly. But just being able to talk to people and like surround yourself with like people that makes you feel positive and happy, it makes a lot of difference for you. Peer support is really important, but it doesn't come naturally or easily to everybody because sometimes bullying is about somebody who is the aggressor trying to isolate everybody from you. So it's very difficult for you to find good friends when you're in that situation. But there are some platforms out there like to provide emotional support, mental support during your tough times. Today we have a very special guest. This is Shi Shetting. Hi, my name is Shetting and I'm a member of Feeling Better. Okay, so can you please tell us more about what this YAC is? So this Youth Action Challenge is actually a challenge that uh, gathers individuals who are uh, keen to improve the society. My team consists of five members. Uh -huh. We actually have the same idea of helping people who mm. are um, being bullied. So we came together to have this project started. Right, yeah. just nice. Today we're talking about bullying, right? All the different experiences. What exactly um, have you done uh, to actually address the issue of bullying for, for your team? Our bullying focuses on cyber bully. Mm. So we actually launched a website that um, has different features and it acts as a one-stop spot for users to use. In the website itself, it consists of different activities, resources, mm. and also hotlines for users to call when they need immediate assistance. What is the most prominent or your favourite feature of this, of this website? Uh, my favourite feature will be the mood indicator. Ooh. Yeah, so every time when we log in to the website, there will be a prompt to uh -huh. indicate your mood on that day before you use our website. And we also use that to personalise users' experience wow. by um, helping them to go to certain resources when they are feeling sad or happy. So how has uh, the Youth Action Challenge played a part in the entire creation of the website. Uh, by joining Youth Action Challenge, it actually helps me to turn my idea into a real-life uh, project. We did not have the fun and uh, resources to get it started with. Right. So Youth Action Challenge actually provided us with a fund mm. for us to kickstart our project. So as Shreti mentioned, the website is still undergoing a prototype stage where they are looking for more contributors to better improve the website. So if you do have any feedback, we welcome them. And in turn, we'll be giving away prizes when you give us feedback. More details will be on TSL's IG page, so do keep a lookout for it. In all honesty, I am really, really touched with whatever that you have been doing so far with your team mm -hmm. because I think mental health is something that we need to speak more about, yes. especially bullying because sometimes the victims, they are silenced yes. and they don't have the outlet to express themselves. So yes, mental health is very important. Yeah, If you want to check out more resources for mental health, you can click the link below. Wow, she can be part of our crew already. <laughs> <there. laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of Tell Me About It. If you like this video, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to ring the notification bell right over here and watch our other videos over there. Over there. Don't be a bully. One action can cause a lifetime of damage. Wow, where did that come from? I don't know. I'm actually amazed at my quote. <laughs>